best part about being part of a secret project is the camaraderie. You're never gonna see anything like that again in your life. My name is Scott Martin. I'm a master development test pilot at Gulfstream. I get a call from Randy Gaston, who was a VP of Flight Ops at the time. He says, hey, come on down to my office. <laughs> I was pretty sure I wasn't in trouble. I hadn't been there long enough to, to get in trouble. So he goes, we're going to start something new. I'm not really sure what it is. And I don't know that he really did. He goes, but uh, I think you're the right guy to do this. So there's going to be a meeting on July 8, 2008. I want you to be there. It just, there was not the tiniest inkling of what was in store. A few of us drove over there together. It was a business hotel off I-95, completely non-characteristic for where you would do a Gulfstream meeting. Very mysterious. We could tell that this was a uh, super secret project that nobody was gonna know unless you were in that room in that hotel. Uh, on that day. Just some chairs set up in the middle of it. There were probably about 20 people. There were a couple of production guys in there, some power plant guys, aerodynamic guys. So everybody in their context is thinking the same thing, wondering what's, what's, uh, what's gonna happen next. And then Press walks in and says, okay, everybody grab a seat. Where's Press? <laughs> Preston Henney has always reached for the sky. He was responsible for the C-17 and awarded the Collier Trophy, the G-5, the G-550, Collier Trophies, the G-650, Collier Trophy, U.S. Aviation's most prestigious award. Wherever he was involved, that company always seemed to be out in front of everybody else. Press Henney, Senior Vice President of Programs Engineering and Test, now retired. Press walks in and he stands up in front and he goes, we're going to replace the middle of the product line. And we're going to start from the ground floor. It needs to be a leader. It needs to be the standard that everybody else looks at and says, how do we do that? When I looked around the room, mostly I started to see people say, man. I would say there was a certain amount of disbelief and really not understanding how big this was. This is what I came to Gulfstream for. It's what I'd always wanted to do, and I, I can't imagine there's a test pilot out there that wouldn't want to be that guy. He was excited. He was like a little kid. I was excited to be in a position to make that step. He holds up this brand new iPhone one. I'd never seen one before. This is the era we're talking about. What I said was, that's where the world is going. That's where we need to go in the cockpit. He really emphasized the size of the device, and this is how I want a flight deck to work. People who fly our airplanes 10 years from now or 20 years from now will be absolutely comfortable with a touch interface because it's changing the world. Initially, kind of a step back, it's like, wow. It was completely unexpected. The team that I was on with the flight deck is, okay, can we start today? <laughs>